service. What is up, listeners? Welcome back to another episode of the Full Service Podcast. I am Tank Smith, your host. Today is episode 74. Thanks for being here. As always, you can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, at Full Service Pod. I am at Tank Funkadelic. If you have not listened to last week's episode, give it a listen. It was a solo episode, and at the end of the episode, I played like a 21-minute interview from Margot St. James from like 1983. So good. I can't, like, so good. Listen to it. After you listen to this episode, if you have not listened to last week's, give it a listen. For real. (laughs) But I appreciate you being here. Yo, if you enjoy the show, make sure you are subscribed on whatever platform you're listening to us on. We recently joined like Amazon Music, Deezer, Radio Public, and a few other spots. So if you're joining us from there, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You'll be alerted as soon as those new episodes drop. If you want to support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash full service pod where you'll be able to hear interviews and episodes you cannot hear anywhere else. It's a good time. Patreon.com slash full service pod. I feel like I don't say this enough, but if you want to be on the show, if you want to hear anything talked about on the show, if you want to write it and let us know how you're doing, what's up, full service pod at gmail.com. Send us an email. That'd be awesome. Today, episode 74, super excited to have you here. My guest is a South Wales-based sex worker, Layla Bimbalina. We initially recorded for the podcast back in like June of 2020, over the summer, and uh, I feel like, I don't know, the audio fucked up, something happened, and then we're like, we gotta re-record, so this is us like a couple weeks ago, super excited to have her back on the podcast. We discuss her love of music animals, going to the Glastonbury Music Festival, her start in sex work, working basically uh, in reception as, at an escort agency, going independent, her passion for bimbofication, camming phone sex, plans for the future, so much. Super excited to have Layla back on the podcast. You can find her on Twitter, at Bimbo Layla, on Instagram, at bimbolina.x. I'll have links to both her Instagram, Twitter, in the show notes from this week. Hit those show notes. Show her some love. I'm going to stop talking. Super excited to have Layla back on the podcast. Hope you enjoy this interview with Layla Bimbalina. Thanks. Welcome back, listeners. It's Tank Smith. I'm so excited for today's episode. My guest is a South Wales-based sex worker, Layla Bimbalina. Layla, thanks for being on the podcast. Hiya. <laughs> I'm excited. This is a uh, second time you've been on the podcast. This is great. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> We uh we filmed or we recorded in like June of 2020. You've not heard that interview. Now she's back. This is great. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm uh listeners. I am you know I'm in Atlanta right now. Layla, where uh where are you located? So I'm in Wales, which is currently in the UK. Although there is quite a big movement for independent Wales going on. So. I don't know if, you know, it's always going to be in the UK, <laughs> but oh, shit. right now it is. <laughs> yeah. Really? Are you, uh, are you for, are you, would you want to see Wales be like separate or? Well, put it this way. I just had a baby pink custom made hat with um, independent Wales written on it. So <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> make of that what you will. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Have uh, have you been to the? Or actually, I was gonna say, where in Wales are you look? I mean, if, is Wales, Wales is pretty big, right? You guys are like the like little brother of like England, I guess. Would you say that? I guess where well, uh, where in Wales are you located? <laughs> um, oh, I always think it's quite small, really. But um, I'm in the south and kind of on the border to England, so. Sometimes people say, oh, you don't sound Welsh, and that's why. <laughs> Maybe okay. I sound a bit more English than, you know, people yeah. from further in. Have you been to the U.S.? I haven't. The closest I've ever been is I've been to the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, as you guys call it. Um, okay. And last year, we, I had plans to go to New York, and originally I cancelled the plans because my dog... I turned 18 and I thought 
I shouldn't be leaving leaving him on his own. And then, and then COVID happened, and you know, so uh, hopefully someday. Someday it's happening. Yeah. Eight, your dog turning eighteen. That's pretty incredible. I know. Well, he passed away in September, but he had a really, yeah, really long life. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, I've I've rescued another dog now, so. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'm all about my pets. <laughs> <laughs> I remember your yeah, I remember you said you had like two Pomeranians last time. That's right, yeah. So. Well I've got two Pomeranians now, but one's different. <laughs> oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, and two cats. And um I mean, honestly, like since I've been at home a lot doing camming, they just do not leave me alone. <laughs> it's like yeah. real footing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. As a, I always like to ask, like as a, as a European, right? How do you feel? Like, how do you, how, how do you guys view the U.S. right now? I know there's oh my God. <laughs> a lot of crazy shits happening. What, what do, you, what do, you, what are y'all thinking? You know, it's just crazy. Like, I grew up in a country where all the TV shows we watched as kids were American, and like everybody wanted to be American. And now all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, America is like not what we thought it was, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it's scary I, I, and the thing that like really shocks me is like the you know these people storm in the white house they're the ones who, who are like oh we're so proud to be americans but like for, as a british person i'm like we, we don't smash up our history if we love our country <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's not how you show you love your country by being that disrespectful to your own history but okay <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty, like, it was wild. Like, I was watching it on TV, like, talking to my buddy about the people storming the Capitol, and I'm like, are they yeah. really fuck? are they really doing this shit right now? How is, how are they just, like, what, like, what the fuck oh is, oh, uh, that crazy. was insane. <laughs> I feel really bad for you guys, and, like, the, you know, there was, like, rioting going on in Portland and stuff, and, yeah, it's, it's been a shocking, well, I was going to say year, but. It, this is 2020 part two let's be honest <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like uh it's not gonna well hopefully you know things will be back in like maybe like six months to some sort of normalcy but i mean who fucking yeah. who knows well who i just knows? found out that the big uk festivals for this summer are being cancelled so it's just like oh, okay so 2020 is still not over <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh actually that was a bit of insider information that i don't think it's actually been announced <laughs> well the people know now it's all yeah. okay <laughs> you heard it here first full service podcast hey yeah. it's not nothing's happening <laughs> yeah but uh hell yeah i appreciate you coming on the podcast again <laughs> oh thanks what uh? What's something you're passionate about? What do you, What do you like to do for fun? Um. Uh, well, live music mostly, and festivals, and that's like it's been a really hard time in that sense because that's the one thing I've always looked forward to: traveling and live music. Neither of which are possible at the moment. Um, yeah. And I'm really, really passionate about animals as well. Do you have a favorite like live music spot in like the UK? Like best spot you've been to? Well, Glastonbury Festival is like just the best thing in the world to me. It's it's got something for everyone and and it's quite magical. <laughs> There's a documentary called Glastonbury After Dark that you should watch if you're interested, and it shows. Okay. Yeah, it really shows you what it's like there. Like not what you see on the mainstream TV, but the yeah, the like behind the scenesy kind of stuff. Um, okay. Yeah. I feel like I saw like there was this music channel that like was here. I think I don't know if it's still around or not, but all they would do was show on loop was like this Coldplay Glastonbury concert from maybe like <laughs> a while back, but like that's all they looped was just that Coldplay yeah. Glastonbury. Oh god. Yeah, well, like the main stage is called the Pyramid Stage and that seems to be the thing that gets like all the media coverage, but I've only seen one or two people on the pyramid stage because it's just like the really busy mainstream bit, but there's so much more to it that people just don't realize. <laughs> is it like for, is it like a, like a few day kind of music festival? Like it's for like maybe like four or five days or some kind of thing? Yeah. Or? Yeah, it is. 
Um, I actually worked there once and I was there for like seven days, which it was very surreal coming back home after living that life. <laughs> Damn. Is it like the kind of like spot where you can like camp and stuff? Like, yeah. like stay on like the grounds and stuff? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a huge farm where everybody camps and just, yeah. Everyone's kind of like in a different frame of mind where they'll help each other out and stuff. But um, it is always funny to like me as a British person when I watch like say Coachella or something because everybody's like, you know, it's nice and sunny and, and then Glastonbury is just like mud, rain. Oh, God. <laughs> Storms. I always forget. Yeah, you guys like got different weather. It was just mad rainy over there. Yeah, <laughs> Wales is the most rainy place ever. It's just. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like Seattle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, actually the city i live in newport in the 90s they used to call newport the new seattle <laughs> really yeah because of like the music scene i think <laughs> oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah wales this is great so excited to have you back on there's not many people oh, we get to do two interviews so i'm like yeah <laughs> oh, that's so nice oh yeah yeah can uh can you remember your like first exposure to sex work at all Oh, God. I mean, I feel like I've wanted to do sex work my whole life. I, it's it's crazy. Like, some people say, oh, nobody wants to do that when they grow up. But I feel like I actually did. Like, I wanted to be a stripper when I was a kid. And I would do, like, strip routines in front of my mirror. And, you know, I would, like, look at Playboy and look at their makeup. And it just seemed so glamorous to me. And, you know, it was just always something I aspired to. But then, like... um, like the sort of escort inside of it. It was quite quite strange how it all happened, really. Um, I wanted to move to a different city and I went for a job interview there for a receptionist job. And I was like, okay, just, you know, I thought it was just answering the phones for some office or whatever. And when I got there, it was an escort agency and it wasn't a very good or nice, pleasant one, but um, I was taking the calls and, you know, booking escorts for people. And it's just like... I don't know something just like went like a light went on in my head and I thought I could do this I should be like on the other on the other end of this you know it's just hell yeah yeah were so you, were you familiar of the world of like escorting at all before like working at the agency as re for like doing reception I didn't know anyone who did it but I knew I've always been really fascinated with it because I used to read these books like when I was a teenager there was like um diary of a call girl and that was like a tv show as well and there were these other books of like a jet setting call girl or something like that I don't know there was a few different ones and they're quite trashy but it's, it's definitely not like it was in those books but yeah I, I can't really explain it but I've always been drawn towards it <laughs> How was, like, how was getting into it? How was moving from, I guess, like, just doing reception to actually, like, working, like, doing sex work? How was that? I, th oh, I think, I, you know, I started off doing, like, a duo with another girl and then, you know, just built up my confidence from that. And I think as long as you've got a few good resources, then you can figure out how to do it properly and do it safely. Um, I think it's really important to talk to other girls you know, just do your research, don't just jump in. Don't go with some, like, agency who are going to take a big cut. And I, apart from all the safety stuff, which I learned quite quickly, I think it was just confidence that I had to build up. But it's certainly a, a good feeling when you, you know, come home and you count all the money you've made. <laughs> just yeah. from being here, you think, well, <laughs> maybe I should be more confident. I mean. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Before like uh like getting into sex work, did you have any like preconceived idea of what you thought like escorting would be? I know like I feel like it had to help like working at like like at, in the reception because you can kind of like see what people are like calling in or what they want. Did you have any idea of like what you thought escorting would be going in? Uh yeah, I think I had a a more positive idea of agencies, especially because the books I'd read they were. I think the girls in those books work for agencies and they were supposed to be based on true stories. Um, whether it's because that was like a different decade or not, I don't know. But um, I think agencies generally aren't a good thing in this country or, you know, these days. I'm not sure about other countries, but the ones here treat the girls quite badly and take too much money from them. 
don't really care for their safety. So yeah, I would have thought before I went into it that an agency would be the ones to look after me, but actually being independent is a lot safer because you can do all the checks yourself. And also like, it's good to have a group of other sex workers to be friends with, to compare notes and, you know, let each other know where you are and things. That's, yeah, that's all you need really. Definitely don't need to give any money to an agency. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> how is it? How is the sex work community in uh, South Wales? I know you're like, how is yeah? How is how is the sex work community there? It's quite small. I don't live in the capital city, but I live near to it, and I have some friends there, and I know some lovely people there. But I wouldn't. It's quite a competitive scene there because it's a capital city. Um, yeah, like I mean, the UK as a whole is quite small. Um, there's um, I've I've had some trouble from you know trusting girls in this business and have my trust betrayed. But then there's some also there's also some really really great girls. Yeah. Um, there's a well known forum as well that you can go on and like so it's a good place to find like um you know like WhatsApp chat groups you can join. Oh, okay. I can give you all the links for these things if any girls listen want to. You know, if there's anyone from the UK who wants to know more. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like there was like a learning curve or like a waiver period in the beginning of escorting where you like you weren't good at it? Not for me, but I think it depends why why you do sex work. Um, I'm such a sexual person. It's like the one thing that I'm confident about. So... Yeah, maybe if I was just, you know, trying to make a bit of cash, then I would have been nervous about it. But um, And I think I, I, at first I made out that I wasn't new to it because I didn't want anyone to take advantage of me. So then I just acted like I wasn't new to it. <laughs> That's smart. I've heard of, like, comedians doing the same thing where, like, they start doing comedy, but then they tell people they've been doing it for a while just so that people, like, treat them differently. Because, like, whenever yeah. somebody starts out in something and then they... <clears throat> they tell people they're new then people react differently than if they were like oh i've been doing this for a while then yeah yeah you get treated differently it's like the fake it till you make it mentality isn't it yeah (laughs) definitely (laughs) what do you feel like your biggest challenge was starting out in sex work i think it took a long time to figure out if i was okay with people in my life knowing about it um or just getting over the fear of that yeah. How how has that been? Do people in your life know? Um, not many. Mm, my partner's known all along and is really supportive about it. But um, I don't really. I've kind of drifted away from my family. Um, because they've like judged me in other ways. Uh, I've t- like I told a handful of friends. I told a friend the other day about about uh, camming. Because she wanted to make some extra cash, you know, with the lockdown and everything. And I was like, well, how about camming? And then I ended up telling her that I do webcam work. And she was like, I don't know, she seemed really like pleasantly surprised, like impressed. So, you Hell know, I was yeah. like, you think people are going to judge you, but they don't always. <laughs> I feel like, especially with like, I mean, I feel like online sex work now, like it's so, it's so out there. And I feel like it's like so in your face. It's like people, are, I feel like, are definitely coming around to, yeah. Like, it's not really a thing, really. I don't know how it is in the UK, but uh, I feel like here I feel like here it's changing. Yeah, definitely. Like, with OnlyFans and stuff, that's become so common. And I think, as well, there's, like, I don't know, I'm not getting any younger. And, you know, I just think, well, this is, you've got one life, and this is what I want to do. And if people don't accept who I am, then I can't not live my life the way I want to. Yeah, especially based on like other people. It's like this you're 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 doing what you're doing. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. What uh oh yeah, I was gonna say, is having somebody you can talk to about work beneficial to you? Yeah, I would go crazy if I didn't sometimes. Like I'm one of the best things has been finding some friends. Uh yeah, friends who also do sex work. So we can just just laugh it off and yeah. You know, it's nice to have a partner who encourages me and is proud of me when I do well. Oh, yeah. But not everybody is lucky enough to have that. So, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. I wish I, know, I could uh, say I the same. Like... No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I wish I could say the same thing about my mother, but there's no way that she would ever 
accept it. So we've just drifted apart. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's some people like no matter what, like positive things you tell them like that this has been in your life, then they're just they just like they just they just can't accept it, you know? Yeah. There's a, bl- a block or something where it's like this is always going to be wrong. And no yeah. matter what what you say or like how you present what you're doing, they're like, I, I can't I can't I can't accept this or whatever. Yeah, like they don't even understand why it's wrong. They're just like, it just is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not harming anyone. It makes me happy, you know. But it's wrong. Yeah. It's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm like I'm around it so much. So I'll be talking to talking to somebody, and I'm like, I'm like, wait, this is like, you don't agree with everything I'm thinking right now. What the what? <laughs> Yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, one thing I feel like that's unique about you uh, compared to like other guests I've had on the podcast is you're into the bimbofication fetish. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? I know when we spoke first time, I didn't, re- I didn't really know what it was. Can you uh, tell the people uh, about bimbofication? Oh yeah. It's like um, my, my biggest passion. <laughs> um, bimbofication is basically a community of bimbos and it's it's a fetish about like um turning into a bimbo so I've actually got like before like 10 year pictures of me where I was like really shy and nerdy and and um like how I've basically turned myself into a bimbo um it's just like the ultra sort of hyper feminine barbie girl like sexual object of your dreams (laughs) all of my dreams and it's just like I, f- I feel like it's been in me bursting to get out forever and I I discovered it and it was just like oh my god yes this is everything and this kind of coincides with doing sex work because it's made me just a much more sexual person I feel like that has to feel good when you like you don't know about something and then you find out about it and you're like, oh, my God, this is the fucking thing. Yeah. This is the thing I've always been searching for, but I didn't know about it. And then you yeah. find it. And you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly it. It's, it's been seven years now. Um, I worked out the other day and I, fe- I originally found it on Tumblr and that's not even like a thing anymore. <laughs> Well, I think Tumblr still exists, but there's nothing like sexual on there. Yeah. And it was like, as soon as I discovered it, I instantly took the plunge. I was like, okay, what can I do? So I just, yeah, started to wear heels everywhere. And I was like, shall I just bleach my hair blonde? And I just did it. And then, yeah, just one thing led to another. And it is honestly the happiest and most confident I've ever been. (laughs) Hell yeah. Is there a pretty big, uh, like, I guess, bimbo, uh, like, community online? Yeah, there is. There's, like, like chat room things, you know, on um, on Discord. <laughs> okay. Um, and, like, on Reddit, there's bimbo communities. There's, like, a whole website, which is the Pink Bimbo Academy, and that's just, like, all the lessons you could possibly need. So, well, you know, it's one person's idea of – like everything you need to do to be the perfect bimbo and okay. you know it's, it's just it's a lot of fun <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how was making bimbofication part of your brand um at first I was actually warned by other like I was warned by some escorts not to do that because they thought men would see it as like cheap and trashy and you should like try and try and you know present yourself as like this classy courtesan or whatever but actually I think just being myself has been beneficial and um it's yeah I only recently have I more and more made it part of my brand because I've sort of tried to link all my all my forms of sex work and all my socials so yeah I think I've got a lot of like a a bigger following because of that bimbofication scene now hell yeah who do you or how long have you been doing uh like, I guess, in-person sex work? Do you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, I wonder if, like, my adult work says what date I joined. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to come back to you with an answer for this. I mean, yeah. it's, it's been a few years. Okay. Who do you, do you I, have, like, an, do you have an average clientele that comes to see you? 
there's definitely a type like I've I'll be out and about sometimes or even watching tv and I'll say to like my partner that guy looks like a client and he knows what I mean (laughs) yeah (laughs) but those those are more like the guys who come for like domination but there's like you know there's a there's a huge range of different people like I get like younger guys who want to be um like sissified which basically like me turning them into a female bimbo um but like yeah your average client is middle-aged married like got a a good but boring job (laughs) and there's just there's just a look that I can't really explain but oh I found out right I've been a member of adult work since the 25th of June 2018 okay so two and a half years but I think Yeah, but I, I've I've done like cam work and stuff for longer, and, and I've done phone sex work as well. <laughs> but that's okay. that's when I actually joined adult work. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like camming or uh, phone sex? Uh, it helped your in person work at all? Do you feel like it had an effect at all? No, not really. I, I, no, it's quite different actually. Yeah. Phone sex is is a weird one because I would just be there in like my scruffiest pajamas just like not feeling sexy at all and then you know just acting but then obviously on cam you're all dolled up and then in person it's just completely different I I think I'm like more myself in person because it's hard to not be mm. yeah that makes obviously, sense. obviously there's like a little a little fear factor in the in person stuff as well when you're meeting someone for the first time but yeah yeah I think, I think they're all all unique really but yeah how is sex work in the uk is it it's a it's legal right like a full service sex work yeah it's legal um it i've i've got a book about this that i'm like halfway through it's it's not decriminalized which is what they want it to be it's like basically it's legal but you you're not supposed to it's like so many things you're not supposed to do including like Two of you can't work from the same premises because that counts as a brothel and you can be arrested for that. And that's like a big thing that we want to change because if two, you know, if there's another woman in the next room, you're going to feel safer. Even if she's just sitting there watching TV, that's so much better than being alone. And I, you know, that law doesn't make sense. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah. Two or more makes a brothel. Like it's like, yeah, that's like putting us in danger. Even if it's two friends and, you know, yeah, that per that other person could literally not even be there for working. sex work. You know, like they could just be like in the other room, and then that makes it a brothel, and they're not even working. That's yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do you feel like when clients reach out to you, like they kind of know what they're doing in terms of contacting you and like how to how to like schedule with you? Mm, they vary hugely. I I feel like over the years, I've really tried to make it clear on my profile what you what I need to know from you but some people will just send like one word messages available or my favorite which I'm pretty sure I told you about before when somebody messaged want sex <laughs> want sex, <laughs> want sex. <laughs> not um, even I like they're oh no they're... yeah sex now as well and sex now <laughs> yeah and do you have sweat feet was another one do you have sweat feet yeah <laughs> So, you know, there's that. But then sometimes I get some, I mean, sometimes I get essays. I'm like, whoa, you just needed to tell me, you know, the the bare minimum, which is when, where, you know. And they're like, good afternoon, dear. Well, let me tell you a little about myself. I was born, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) <laughs> yeah they're the copy and pasters like we always know yeah. when they're copying and pasting because all yeah. the girls have the same message and it's like do you think we don't communicate with each other <laughs> <laughs> oh man how is like i know with like sex work being legal in the uk how is it viewed in the uk like is it like a negative thing positive thing do people like feel kind of neutral about it how how is it kind of viewed in in i guess uk wales um no there's still a lot of slut shaming and like people that i think highly of well because i've got like my 
my vanilla socials and I'll see people that I thought were nice, intelligent people and they'll post like nasty memes about girls getting their bits out on uh, OnlyFans and, you know, people can be really judgmental and they don't realise that someone they love is probably a sex worker. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I have seen a lot of that on Facebook to where people are talking shit about OnlyFans, like, because they're upset they're not getting part of that money, you know? Yeah. And they're just, it's the money thing. They're just like, Mm. God damn it. I'm upset because I am not willing to do what these other people are willing to do. And so I don't Mm. get the money. Yeah. And so I try to make them feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, I think, like, generationally, it will change gradually. Like, the older generation are like Christians, a lot of them, you know, like my mother. But I yeah. think the younger generation coming up are mostly atheist. And I do think it's religion that has made people ashamed to be sexually free. So Definitely here, for sure, with like America, we're just like, you know, super, uh, <laughs> super yeah. religious, yet not religious at all the same yeah. time. Yeah, like the Bible <laughs> Belt. I've, that's always been amazing to me. It's like, okay, you have guns and shoot each other but you're like super christian and (laughs) it's so like this because i'm in the south and i'm in the south and it's like part of the bible belt but if you look like yeah if you look up though like pornhub they're most like a lot of their uh like i guess like gay videos are like heavily watched in the south no like where we're the most yeah where we're like the most religious it's like see people are just like so repressed they're just like secretly doing it yeah, oh, yeah, see, that's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I had like quite a religiously suppressing childhood, and I think honestly, I tr- truly believe that's why I'm so sexual and wild because it was like so naughty, so frowned upon that it's made me go yeah. the other way. <laughs> I feel like if you don't make a thing like this taboo thing, then people aren't going to be like, Oh my god, I have to do it because it's like yeah. so many people do something because of the fact that you not supposed to do it you know yeah but if you if you take away this like oh this is a bad negative thing it just like changes how everybody looks at it and it's not weird anymore yeah which is that applies for a lot of things I, i was talking to someone about this recently with obesity like the government in this country try and like shame people out of obesity but it goes the opposite way. If somebody feels ashamed of like over, you know, of like eating too much, they're gonna overeat. To hell yeah, I do that shit all the time. I'm like, yeah. I might have it. I need an extra burrito to make me feel bad about that other burrito that I had. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and stop shaming people about anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How? Uh, what's the like? Cause so here, right? Like so much. Like other than Nevada full service sex work is illegal and you're not able to really talk about what's what can happen or what's going to happen in a meetup because that just makes makes creates illegality in the meetup are you able to talk about i guess like specifics of what's going to happen in a meetup before actually meeting somebody or does that change the legality of it um i think it's fine as long as you're an individual when you work for an agency, you have to say like, oh, it's at the person's discretion. But if, if you're talking about yourself, then yeah, you can just discuss Hell things yeah. freely. <laughs> I feel like, because when I, the first, I, I guess I interviewed Alice Little who works at the Bunny Ranch like a couple weeks ago. Uh-oh. And we were talking about it. And just, I feel like that whole being able to have the discussion of what will happen before actually meeting up with somebody the client's able to kind of understand what's going to happen going in rather than having these expectations of like oh anything could happen Mm. but knowing ahead of time actually what's going to happen i feel like it make the customer experience better that you're able to you're able to do that there it's great i don't know yeah oh i remember watching a program about the bunny ranch when i was like a lot younger and i was like i want to go there i remember being i remember being 12 watching yeah that's uh, Cat House on HBO as a little kid, and I was like, "This is the greatest fucking place on yeah. earth." <laughs> when I grow up and become a millionaire, I'm gonna go to the Bunny Ranch. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go one day, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just need to you save up. <laughs> you should, yeah. Let's go together. <laughs> just cash out my 401k early and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna die a happy man." 
no health insurance, but I went to the bunny ranch for a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> What's the uh, what's the relationship like between the sex workers and authorities? Like, are you able to contact the authorities, like in in cases of like assault or anything like that? Yeah, um, I mean, it's definitely encouraged. I've never been in that situation, thank God. But thank God, <laughs> I'm talking about being an atheist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I. I'm not an authority on this, but I'm pretty sure it's, you know, it's the, still the same situation as if you were just. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, people don't have that luxury here. You can't go no. to the house for like so many things. Yeah. But it's still not, you know, there's, there's still dangers for sex workers. There's, you know, I actually know a sex worker who was murdered. I didn't know her well, but, you know, they do tend to be targeted because, men think that people don't know where they are and you know that they'll get away with it but they don't get away with it so <laughs> goddamn right fuck them yeah anyway that's dark <laughs> <laughs> i know last time we spoke uh you kind of mentioned that you were trying to get into porn at all are you still trying to do that are you still on the porn path oh, i would really like to yeah I just I don't know I've been I've been trying forever and this seems it seems quite hard to crack. I've been I've, just, I've done the OnlyFans thing and I'm over that. But that just yeah. that seems to be the way that everything's going now. Yeah. I could like move to LA maybe things would be different but I feel like with the accent you go to the states about to take over. <laughs> Do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. It would have to be milf born though. <laughs> yep that's people like the milfs yeah, true. <laughs> they're yeah. a whole category on pornhub you know so yeah do you have a favorite uh porn star anybody you like look up to that you're like i want to be like this person or you're like i'm trying to just be myself or do you have a favorite well maybe not in terms of like what i want to look like but asa akira i've just i had her book for christmas and it was so good to, it's so refreshing to read a positive take on the porn industry. And like the way that she talks about herself is like, oh my God, she's exactly like me. She's been like a very sexual person from a young age and she's just so happy, you know, and comfortable with that. And it was so nice to read, like just can't be, yeah. yeah. And then like in terms of like porn stars that I like looking at, <laughs> well, not that I don't like looking at her, but um Nikki Benz is really nice. And okay. Sophie Anderson from the UK, she's just like the sweetest, kindest, most positive person. Sophie Anderson? Yeah. I'm about to look her up. Yeah. Have you heard of the Cock Destroyers? <laughs> the Cock Destroyers? I have yeah. not. <laughs> okay, so Sophie Anderson and Rebecca Moore were like famous in porn. And then they posted a video of themselves saying like, um, with fucking cock destroyers but it went viral in like the gay community so now like they've become gay icons <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> yeah but like sophie is just the way that she oh she puts out like these positive messages like you know bigging everyone up and she's just like always there for her fans yeah that's great i think yeah it's just it's really good when people are like lovely sweet people like sophie and asa akira they seem like really nice people but they're also really sexual because it just proves that sex isn't some nasty evil thing <laughs> yeah no it's the thing that we are a product of being here yeah exactly it's, it's as natural as eating that's how we keep the that's how we keep the human race going <laughs> yeah that's wild how has we're in a pandemic right now if uh nobody really knew hey aliens <laughs> there's a pandemic don't come yeah uh, how has <laughs> how has it been in the uk i know you guys had like lockdowns i feel like they were more serious than we had uh how oh. is how has that been for you well we're in a lockdown right now in wales since last march i feel like wales has pretty much just constantly been in a lockdown there was a very tiny amount of time when the restaurants and pubs open but everybody was like you know had to sit separately and oh it's just been yeah like what is, a, 
what does the lockdown look what is, like how does that look for you like like are like what's open what's closed what are you able to do so um there's a comedian in the uk frankie boyle a scottish comedian and he, he was recently talking about oh actually t- uh, two comedians were talking about this daisy may cooper was as well about how like um like these days, your you, your day out, you know, is going to ASDA, which is a uh, is Walmart, and that's <laughs> that's all you can do basically is go to the supermarket. Like there's all the soap and is corner shops in the supermarket, and I find myself getting really dressed up now to go to the supermarket, and you have to wear really? your mask and sort of you let in one by one, and you have to sanitize your hands. But there's no pubs, clubs, shops, nothing, restaurants. It's just dead <laughs> really wow yeah 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 i'm in a, i'm in atlanta and uh it's pretty much like it's not really happening the pandemic there's a yeah clubs are open restaurants bars no way. every yeah pretty much everywhere is open it's not really a no. pandemic's kind of done here I feel like I have uh, a panic attack everyone in a bar because it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, people don't really... <laughs> it's wide open, but... <laughs> oh like now, if you go on the train, you have to... Or like to a hotel, you've got to be able to prove that you're a key worker. Or like at least, you know, get away with saying that you're a key worker. I feel like we had that for about two weeks. They were oh like, the only essential workers are the people like... And then they were like, oh. what are we doing? See, People we're, need jobs. we're coming up to like a year of it now. <laughs> yeah. I never leave the house. I just go out to walk the dogs and that's it. <laughs> that has to be yeah, that has to be that has to be rough. Like I I know like I mean obviously you have seen like I guess things that are happening in the US news. Have people been, I guess, protesting at all, kind of like lockdown there? Like Oh, there like were people they- protesting lockdown in London. Um I think there was meant to be one in Cardiff. But I don't really know if it went ahead. Um, there was the the BLM thing was big here though, like everywhere in the world. Um, yeah, I, I remember like because when we recorded, that was like uh, stuff was happening over in Europe. Stuff um, was happening here. You guys had just toppled some like statue into like a river or something uh, like that. Yeah, yeah, and they they had them. Um, I don't know if I'd been to the protest here. Or I was about to. But I went to the protest in my city and it was it was really, really good. Um, I double masked for it, but that was probably the last time that I was like in close contact with <laughs> a lot of people. Oh, oh God. That was like June. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. Like, besides that, I've hardly seen anyone. <laughs> that was definitely the last time I saw any friends, I think. <laughs> Man, like we think like like we're talking shit about like us having stuff closed over here. You guys, you guys are. Uh... That's a whole other level. That's yeah, really incredible. I cancelled Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck the pandemic. We can stop talking about that. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like well, you're just like... Ugh. On the plus side, I think it's been better for cam work because there's a lot of people working from home or supposed to be working from home and they're bored and they want to see a sexy girl on cam. So there's that. <laughs> That's, yeah hell yeah that's been good <laughs> do you feel like the cam work has definitely picked up during uh during the pandemic yeah i do yeah well or, or more so like the fact that you can do it during the daytime now yeah not just at night yeah does burnout ever happen for you at all not really with sex work no i'm just can't i'm like the most horny person ever and I just never stop hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> But I'm studying as well as doing this, and I get like burnout from studying, where I just okay. find, I find myself like throwing myself into sex in into like the sex world more to like put off studying, which is very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh? Since starting sex work, do you feel like your views on sex or sexuality have changed at all? I think they've just enhanced my views, really. Like. It's really confirmed what I've always believed, which is that people should be more sexually open and free and, you know, not let society shame them. Hell yeah. Yeah. If you're a sexual person, then you should be proud and you should, you know, don't let anyone slut shame you. Yeah. Because you're having more fun than every. Yeah. You're having more fun than everybody else. What are you like? (laughs) Yeah. You're going to try to make me feel bad for (laughs) feeling good. 
Yeah, I know. If people look down on you, they're just jealous because you're having a great time. Yeah. Party on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like your views on men or women has changed since starting? Um, I think I was a bit more trusting of women before I got into this business. As I just had a small circle of people and I assumed everybody was as nice as me and I've been backstabbed, but not by everyone. And I think well, some people some people say they could never trust a man again after doing sex work. But you know, everybody's different and Yeah. I don't I don't really feel any differently about men, I think. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like how you view yourself has changed since starting sex work? Yeah, um, I'm just more confident, just so much happier. I feel like like if you knew me seven or eight years ago, you didn't know me. That's how I feel because <laughs> I'm like a different person now. And I don't know if that's sex work or been both vacation or both. Oh, yeah. What advice would you give somebody wanting to get into sex work? I would say do your research. Don't. Don't let anyone rip you off. Don't don't pay anyone for advice. Don't pay anyone for like to join the agency. Um, yeah, just I mean it, it depends what kind of sex work you want to do. It's not easy money. It is hard. It's emotionally hard and physically. <laughs> so don't do it if you don't think you you know. If it's not in your heart, like. You know, you have to love it to do it. You can't just do it because you think it's going to be easy money because it will take its toll on you. <laughs> but it can also be really great if it's the right thing for you. Just just make sure you do your research and, and be safe with it. Like, there's ways to check numbers. There's, there's, you know, it's important to, like, make sure someone knows where you are if you're doing an out call and you don't know the person. You know, just, just be safe. Do your safety checks. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. What uh? What would you tell a like potential client wanting to see a sex worker for the first time? Be clean and polite. That's the most important thing. You know, just read her profile. She'll tell you what she needs to know, and then tell her exactly that. Then just contact her with one word. And and please, please, please don't send a dick pic. Nobody wants it. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever met one person that wanted a dick pic. Oh. Actually, I've... I have, but not like, you know. Yeah, like if I ask for one, okay. But I actually had to put a message out on my uh, Instagram earlier because I woke up this morning, I'm having my morning coffee, and I'm like, oh, can you please not? Like, just, like I don't want it. <laughs> I saw that. you put, Yeah, I saw you post on Instagram about it. Like, yeah. bro. Like, stop no it. One, <laughs> nobody sent a dick pic unless you get – like explicitly ask for the dick pic yeah like, but clients do it when they're, they're like oh hi are you available and then they send the dick pic like that's gonna tempt you we're like whoa that dick caught me off guard let me see it now <laughs> like what yeah no i'm just gonna get you blocked and they're gonna tell everyone else you did it so don't do it <laughs> <laughs> how long do you see yourself in sex work I was thinking about this the other day. I reckon I'm probably going to be doing it when I'm an old granny. Like, there's always because there's there's always room for people, isn't there? You know, like there's there's so many yeah. niches, and yeah, uh, unless like my sex drive disappears with age, you know, with like the menopause or whatever, I'll probably always do it because I'm just such a sexual person. Oh but, yeah. Um, but I am in university as well, so I've got like my plan B. Okay yeah <laughs> nice where do you see yourself in like five years um hopefully i've moved to a different place i'm i love wales but i've lived here a really really long time my entire life and i want to move somewhere else like yeah i know last time we spoke you mentioned uh hamburg yeah Germany. i love hamburg I, I, I would like to live in england um in the midlands or Hamburg I'd love to move there uh, yeah so hopefully in five years I'll have moved nice and I'm like a really well-known bimbo and I'm really successful <laughs> is there like are there like not like bimbo contests or whatever but like is there like a way like can you like not like is is there rank not like rankings but like 
Can, can you be the number one? Well, there's some people who like to clear themselves the number one, but everybody's got different tastes. But there's definitely like certain well-known people who are like feature on, you know, websites and blogs and stuff about bimbos. And it would be nice to be recognized for my hard work. <laughs> oh, yeah. What would you do if you could do anything? Like, say money wasn't an obstacle, you could do anything you wanted all day, every day. What Do you have the thing, or not necessarily all day, every day, but do you have a thing you would do? Um, yeah, be, like, have the, the body that I want and be a bimbo porn star <laughs> and live Heck in a pink yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> just like two lots chains. Of animals. <laughs> Heck yeah. Do you get a favorite animal? Like if you were going to get an animal, I got to get this animal. Oh, well, my favorite animal is elephants, but <laughs> to, to get you can, you, for that. <laughs> yeah, you can tell the people if you had an elephant, that'd be pretty sweet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, Simpson had one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'm kind of obsessed with Pomeranians. It, which just happened by accident because I've, I've been rescuing dogs for a few years now and I've just got hooked on poms, even though, as you know, they're really naughty and they bark all the time, but they're just so adorable. I always think of the uh, Big Lebowski. Have you seen that? I have, yeah. Yeah, the his dude's ex-wife uh, had a Pomeranian. Oh, really? That's I don't I... remember. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. John Good... oh, yeah, I'm John sorry. Goodman, his, uh, his ex-wife in the uh, movie uh she had a pomeranian you never see the dog you never they just talk about it oh i'm gonna have to watch it again so yeah, they mentioned the... i i know someone who has a dog that is named lebowski <laughs> oh <laughs> nice are are you a fan of stand-up comedy yeah. at all yeah definitely um I have so many comedians I like. They change all the time. Like at the, at the moment, I'm really into Scottish comedy. Like I've been watching a lot of Frankie Boyle, and there's a comedian called Limmy. Um, I've never seen him do any stand up. I think he might have done it once, but he's just the funniest, but like the most fucked up funny person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um. And I, oh, I was really into Aziz and Louis C.K. for a while. They're really funny. Okay. Oh, yeah. like? oh so many people. <laughs> there are so there. I mean, there's so many, like so many funny comedians. Like it's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like always trying to find new comedians to. Uh, yeah, I love laughing. <laughs> and, do you uh, do you know who Rory Scovel is? No. Rory Scovel, you should check him out. He's super funny. Okay, I'm writing this down. Rory Scovel, check out Limmy then if you haven't already. The Limmy show. How do you spell? Is it L L L E M M E? How do you spell that? L I M M Y. I butchered that. Limmy. He's <laughs> he's, he's like it's he does like tw is that what it's called Twitch? Yeah, he does Twitch stuff now on YouTube. But he had a show called The Limmy Show and. It's just so okay. funny. You might need subtitles because it's very Scottish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll check it out, though. Rory what? Scovel, S-C-O-V-E-L. Okay. There yeah, super, fu super funny. <laughs> awesome. Layla, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, thanks for having me. It's, wanna... been, it's been great. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate you coming back twice Yay. on the podcast. I know. <laughs> oh wow it's been an hour already wow that went that went fast hell yeah do you want to plug uh some social media for the people so they can find you out there yeah um so my instagram is bimbolina.x uh twitter is just bimbo layla bimbo layla and if you go on my twitter then you can find links to my camming and my adult work so yeah check them out Sweet. Hell yeah. Layla, I appreciate you coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been really great. And Heck yeah. I can't wait to listen well, to the episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, we will be back later. That was my interview with Layla Bimbalina. Yo, shout out Layla. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. That was a lot of fun. 
Listener, she just plugged it. I will plug it again. You can find her on Twitter at Bimbo Layla, on Instagram at Bimbolina.x. I will have a link to both her Twitter and Instagram in the show notes for this week. Hit those show notes. Show her some love. As always, you can find us on Twitter, on Instagram at Full Service Pod. I'm at Tank Funkadelic. If you enjoy the show, make sure you are subscribed on whatever platform you're listening to us on. If you're on Apple Podcasts, hit us with a five-star rating, write us a review. That would help us so much for visibility for the show. If you want to be on the podcast, if you want to hear anything talked about, if you want to write in, write a little love note, let us know what's going on in your life, fullservicepod at gmail.com. Yo, thanks for being here. This has been episode 74. We will be back next Tuesday. Super excited. My guest is a Detroit-based sex worker, activist, artist, Parker Westwood. She is the host of A Sex Worker's Guide to the Galaxy. Super excited to have her on. I think we recorded probably like a couple weeks ago. Maybe it's toward the beginning of the year. But uh, super excited for y'all to hear that. We will be back on Tuesday. Hope uh, hope everything's all right wherever you're at. Fucking pandemic's happening, but we're still going. We will be back every single Tuesday till the end of time. I appreciate you being here. I will see you then. Later.